was so revolutionary about this building? And how can this be a port with no harbour? Or boats? Or water source? Find out now on this episode of Astonishing Glasgow. It's February, it's cold and it's raining outside, so I've left the bike at home and jumped in my car to explore the Port Eglinton area of the city. It doesn't look like there could be anything astonishing about this slightly tatty rundown area, but if you look closely there is always a story to be found. The first question to be answered is why is it called Port Eglinton? when there are no boats, no rivers, no harbours, and the sea is about 30 miles away. It all started right here in what is now a building merchants. Back in 1807, Hugh Montgomery, the 12th Earl of Eglinton, opened the first section of the Glasgow, Paisley and Ardrossan Canal right here. At the time, the River Clyde was too shallow to allow large trading vessels access to the city. So the Earl's plan was to connect Glasgow to the sea by building a canal to Ardrossan. And right here was the terminus in what became Port Eglinton. The canal was completed as far as Johnston by 1810, but improvements to the river soon started to take away its trade. By 1869, the canal lay derelict and was purchased by the Glasgow and South Western Railway who would fill it in and use the route for their Paisley Canal railway line. This shot shows the building merchants when it still had access to the railway and was used as a goods depot. But as far as I can tell, in Glasgow there is no trace of the canal left. Now I've not just brought you down here to see a builder's yard. On the other side of Mochlin Street stands one of Glasgow's Art Deco gems. And if you have ever arrived by train from the south, there is a good chance it has caught your eye. This building was opened in 1933 and was originally the Scottish headquarters of the Leyland Motor Company. The architect who is credited with the building's design is James Miller, who amongst other things is responsible for the Grand Anchor Line building on St Vincent's Place. When the Leyland Company moved out, it became the headquarters of the Strathclyde Police Dog and Mounted Division. I think I even remember visiting here with the Boys Brigade and seeing the stables inside while I was growing up. The Strathclyde police moved out before the new M74 flyover was completed in 2012 and sadly, the bulk of the building has remained empty ever since. It's a real shame to see it rotting and losing the original features such as the lino floor on the entranceway. As far as I know, the police put it up for sale but I don't know if it ever sold. Astonishingly, this is not the only building in the area that was part of Glasgow's motoring industry. Just two blocks down Sal Keld Street and under the motorway flyover is this building. For many years this was operated by Arnold Clark as a car body shop, but astonishingly it started its life as a purpose built car factory. The factory was custom built by the William Parks Motor Body Company to be the Parks Motor Works in 1913. Now if you go back to my episode about the Sentinel Works, I'll put a link at the end of the video or down in the description, you will learn how that building influenced architect Albert Kahn when he was building car factories in Detroit, USA. This building, although not designed by Kahn, definitely took its inspiration from his style of car factory from the Motor City. Built on a far smaller scale but no less innovative, the factory here was spread over three storeys. 
On the ground floor was the metalworks and blacksmith department, with the chassis then being raised using one of the first lifts in the city, built right through the centre of the building, to the first floor, where the wooden parts would be crafted and fitted. After the wooden bodies had been added, the cars would go back into the lift to be raised to the second floor for paint and varnishing. Once complete, the cars were moved onto the roof for storage before being lowered back down to the ground level and transported off to their new owners. Recently the building is put up for let after Arnold Clark moved their body shop about half a mile away to the old Parcel Force building at the other end of Coburnie Street. When I was there it looks as though the building is being used as a warehouse and I was getting extremely suspicious looks from those people loading the van. There is one last story for this episode before the rain stops my camera working or the cold stops my fingers from working. It is absolutely freezing out. We don't need to travel too far for the next story because it took place right next door and is unfortunately one of the darkest events in Glasgow's history. This building is part of the Sher Brothers cash and carry business. Originally built as a stable in 1899, it was owned by the Sher Brothers by August 25th 1972 when a fire broke out in the loft at around 11am. The firemen from South Station were on the scene in minutes, but with the fire gaining strength, the call was made for reinforcements. By 12 o'clock, the men in the building were becoming exhausted and the fire was growing in strength. All officers were told to evacuate. Once outside, a roll call was taken and it was discovered that one of the firemen, Fireman Rook, was missing. He'd been pinned down by falling stock in the maze of the shelves and a party of six went in to rescue their colleague. But before they could exit the building, the fire erupted in a flashover and part of the building collapsed. Further attempts were made to rescue those inside, but it was soon clear that there were no survivors. In total, seven men lost their lives that day, and what would have been a straightforward fire to tackle is now etched in Glasgow's history as one of its darkest events. The men are commemorated on the Firefighters Memorial in the Glasgow Necropolis. And that was a sad way to end our tour of Port Eglinton, but a story that deserves to be told. If you have enjoyed this video, then hit that like and subscribe button, share it with your friends, and stick around for links to more of my videos that you may like. Get in touch, either by the comments or by my social media feed. And thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time in Astonishing Glasgow.